right, what's going on, y'all? Right, it is day 12. And what I find myself doing nowadays is fighting against the, uh, the daylight, you know, because I'm losing daylight, um, which kind of sucks. So I'm actually going to be at the shop later with Chuck, uh, just working on some stuff. But I did the major wiring yesterday, and today I have to figure out the alternator wiring. So in the spirit of upgrades, I went ahead and got a 3G alternator. Check this out. Boom. So I went to my home yard, uh, U Pick Parts over there on Alameda. Picked this alternator up for the hot $10. It's a 3G alternator. It's supposed to upgrade my power because this old alternator um, that's in here doesn't have much uh, power, you know. So we're going to go ahead and upgrade it and then uh, show you guys how to do that upgrade. All right. Um, so, yeah. The wire for the alternator is, that's not it. Where is it? It's this one right here. See? And it's stretching across. And the way that they have it from the factory is that it goes underneath this battery box. It goes all the way around. Okay? So just as it stands, just like this, it only gets to about here before it needs some help. Okay, um, which really sucks. So I'm gonna go ahead and strip this loom off and see what's going on under there and see if we can uh, stretch it safely. All right, let's go. All right, so here's the old alternator. <clears throat> you can usually tell the old ones by the bladed kind of fan on the front here, okay? Uh, you wanna upgrade these because I plan on using a contour, <clears throat> Ford contour fan. Which uh, is a great upgrade for these cars. Since I'm about to wire it anyway, I might as well do an upgrade. And so just a little bit of mod to the bracket here. Uh, I'm gonna have to just shave down just a tad. Just like literally like there's a tad right here that I'd have to kind of take off. All right, so you get the picture. I'll show you guys how to wire. So I took the flywheel back off and uh, the pressure plate and everything, and I got to this um, to the stage where I got the uh, the, the uh, block plate off. So I was talking with my buddy Pablo, who I got this T5 uh, block plate from, and he was like, "I use the AOD one all the time," and I was like, "Yeah, I did too." But you know, as you can see, let's match up the holes here, right? These holes match up. Those holes match up, but look at the starters. Look, it doesn't match. That's where a starter would be, but then look at all the holes. It's the strangest thing, man. Look, look at the center hole, look at that. So it's either that. So I, at first I thought maybe I did something wrong, but upon further inspection, I didn't do anything wrong. It literally is different. It's weird. I don't know if I had maybe a bigger flywheel in there or something, or a bigger um, flex plate. But that's the size of the point. We got it here now. So uh, yeah, let's go ahead and throw this in. So now uh, we got the proper block plate and I just put those two bolts in to kind of hold the block plate in place. Since the motor is tilted, um, it tends to want to keep falling off. So I just went ahead and put that uh, on there. But yeah, uh, so we're gonna go ahead and um, torque down those bolts. Wipe this flywheel down again, wipe the grease off, and uh, reinstall this clutch pressure plate. And then uh, put the bell housing on finally. Yes, get this trans in. Here is, T5 is in, all right. I didn't put the, the, the uh, Speedo cable all the way in because um, I gotta change the gear on it. I got a yellow gear in there, so I gotta get the one that matches for the Fox body. But I put the drive shaft in for now. I used the jack to kind of lift it up a little bit so I can put in the mount. I poured the fluid through the shifter cup up there. The shifter's still not on because uh, my silly butt forgot the uh, forgot the damn silicone. Um, 
man, I can't, you know, it's hard to work on stuff when you got everything at your shop and then I gotta go and get it and then come back. So I forgot the silicone for the shifter. So I'm gonna have to put that on after the fact. Um, so yeah, uh, we're just gonna go on ahead and uh, I'm gonna put the mount in right now. Um, but I'm not gonna lock it down because uh, I still wanna be able to drop it to put the shifter on and then I'll jack it all the way up again and then put the uh, the mount in. But one thing I will do um, is uh, hook the drive shaft up since it's back here, you know what I mean? So we'll hook that drive shaft up. It can drop even with the, uh, you know, it can drop down. I'll just take the jack and take it down when I'm ready to put the shifter in. It's just easier this way. I don't really wanna mess with the inside too much, uh, pulling things apart in there since it's so put together and nothing is cracked. Like. You'd be surprised how brittle some of that stuff is and the minute that you start messing with it, it just breaks into pieces, you know what I mean? All right, so that's it for the day. I am uh, very happy at what's happened today. The trans went in, bell housing, clutch, all that good stuff. Dry shaft is in, trans mount is in. I feel good about that, man. So um, yeah, with that in mind, I mean, uh, I'm gonna just keep pushing and uh, see where everything kind of lands me for the rest of the day, you know? Um, only thing I'm kind of concerned with is I noticed that this clutch cable is too short. Um, I'm trying to adjust it. Maybe I, I'm thinking maybe I have it anchored in the wrong location. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to try to uh, readjust that, see if I can get it to do a little bit more of what I want it to do. But other than that, um, it would just be a power steering thing. And from what I remember, the power steering pump um, in this car does not work. And I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of knock that down. All right. So, you out, man? Yeah, All, right. All right, man. So yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, take the four-cylinder pump, take the uh, pulley off and everything, because I got that tool now to take the pulley off of the power steering pump and replace it with the four-cylinder one. Um, hopefully it works. Uh, I'm not too sure if it does or not, but it is what it is. All right. So we out here, day 12. I think by day 14, which is two weeks, um, I should be done. So I know a real timeline to how, how long it takes to really get this done, because there's really nothing major left to do. Wiring's in, I'm gonna wire the alternator, um, put a battery in this mug and try it out. I think I got, oh, the starter, I gotta put the starter in. And I wanna make sure that it's the right starter because of uh, that whole flywheel issue or the uh, flywheel flex plate issue and the uh, block plate issue because they were different. So, I don't know. But anyway, it is what it is, guys. We'll see you next time, man. Junkyard Dog, let's go.